So today we're finishing up our series on building your custom engine agent using the Teams AI library. So if you uh, haven't seen the other uh, first two parts, you can go online for the YouTube channel, of course, to catch up. But this will be informative uh, and a good uh, you know way to round out the series. So for today, we'll do a, a quick recap what we were going over last week, and then we're going to go over some advanced uh, custom engine features, including building an auto gym agent team and then uh, we'll round it out with publishing your app and uh, utilizing the developer portal so it will give a, a nice whole picture of a beginning to end for watching the series and, and going through the whole life cycle for building and publishing your app so last week we had the really exciting uh, build of building a financial agent utilizing Microsoft's earnings call data, and we we're able to go and perform a retrieval augmentation generation based on that data and get some wonderful, insightful answers, as well as utilize citations and all the great features that you get from the Teams AI library while using the, the Visual Studio Code in the Teams Toolkit. And shout out to John, who is part of that team, and they do a great job using those templates. And so that is a great way to get started with building your Teams AI library apps uh, with using those uh, templates from Teams Toolkit. But uh, so if we go and look at that build, um, you know, we picked out uh, our nice model GPT-4 Mini from uh, Azure AI Studio, as well as, or excuse me, Azure AI Foundry. And then uh, if you go through the uh, agent checklist, we also updated the prompt, added our data, and, and did the feedback loop, and then did a shout out to single sign-on, uh, which is great to use for Teams. But if you remember going back to our uh, custom engine agent, when you go and, and look at all the capabilities you have for fully customizing that stack, you have the ability to not only just do the knowledge and the foundational models like we did last week, and then or if you did the Copilot camp where you're doing tasks uh, and, and actions, you also have the ability to have custom orchestration and planners to control the full stack. And this opens you up to have really some very interesting capabilities. And so if you want to dive deep into that next level of building your custom engine agent, then uh, you can go check out the Teams AI library GitHub where there are a lot of different samples uh, to go in deep, uh, dive deep into all these different concepts, including custom planning, custom orchestration, as well as more uh, samples on, on AI actions, chat with your data, authentication. And so today we're going to be exploring the uh, one of the samples on custom orchestration with Autogen. So it uh, brings up the exciting opportunity of building uh, not just one agent, but you have a team of AI agents to then collaborate with each other and specifically for this sample, be able to evaluate a, a specification document uh, from someone on the team and then and then go and coordinate between three agents where you have a questioner agent that can coordinate with an answering agent and then all, uh, end up with the final decision evaluation from an evaluator agent. So it's all three agents, three separate prompts that you can then go and work to coordinate as a team to have uh, more improved answers. And I think that's something you're gonna be seeing more of as agents continuing to develop where you develop a whole team, whether or not it's like this one for evaluating spec, maybe it's a, a marketing and outreach team to go and evaluate inbound leads, coordinate in, uh, with, with the, the lead itself, as well as evaluate and qualify that lead. So there are very interesting possibilities for you to go in and dive deeper. So we're gonna go through and Today, we use GPT-4.0 from actually straight from OpenAI instead of Azure AI Foundry, because the, the uh, Teams AI library grants that flexibility there, as well as then uh, instead of uh, utilizing RAG uh, straight from preloading our files, we're going to enable the Teams attachment downloader so that the user can uh, enable or just attach their spec to a message and then have the agent team evaluate it. So let's dive into it. All right. Um, now, granted, with, with the time, so I already have uh, this sample up from the Teams AI Library GitHub. And one quick thing to note, 
Uh, the samples here can have slightly different setup from where you have with the Teams toolkit. So it's always good to start out with the README and how you get start out with samples. You can go in the terminal, use git clone, uh, the Teams AI from the GitHub with the Teams AI uh, Git. And then all you have to do for a lot of these samples, once you have the initial environment set up uh, with, you know, for poetry install, uh, you know, poetry build, as well as having that virtual environment since we're in a Python sample. You just have to rename uh, the sample.env file to .env and then enter in your OpenAI key, which I have already uh, done in preparation here. Um, so you don't want to share the, the key over, uh, you know, over the call. But then for a lot of those samples, then it's good to go just right there. And so I think what well, we'll go here and then just look uh, just for more for a quick learn on how some of this is set up with a custom planner. And so you can go and, and dive into some of the code. You can look here where you go to the bot.py and then you can dive into some of the code where we have the storage, the app set up, as well as uh, the adapter and then where you have the Onogen planner that lays it out right here. And so instead of using the default planner that you might have with one of the team's uh, toolkit templates where you're calling out from Onogen and then uh, this code right here for the Autogen planner lays out how you can have this set up. Again, this is more of an advanced setup. So this going through some of these samples, you can dive in and see how to do it yourself uh, in more detail, as well as uh, refer to some of the other samples on actions and, and tasks to get more information there. So we won't have time to dive through everything today, but I think it's a great way to learn and do more. And so for the actual agents uh, themselves with the spec critique group, where you can go into specritiquegroup.py, you can see how it's how, a little bit of how it's set up with these uh, team of different agents. So it this has uh, directions for the spec critique group where it's when they get a specification, it's identifying the audience, the problem, solution, value proposition, competition, and seven different criteria to really look at to determine is this a good spec or not. And then from three different agents, you have multiple different roles where the first one is a question agent or it's your role to ask questions to the, of the product spec and get that uh, answers from the answer agent to determine if the specification is meeting those requirements. And then below that, you have a, another setup for that answer agent where a separate prompt where you can customize and then saying the role is to answer the questions based on the uh, product spec, uh, spec requirements and answer them clearly and concisely. And then the third one with the evaluator agent is to uh, give the evaluation of the overall spec itself based on what it's seeing from the questioner and answer agent. So it's a three agent team working as a group to go and evaluate the spec. And then you yourself can customize each of these versions to have your own team of agents uh, collaborating together. Now, once you've uh, entered in your OpenAI key, then you can go ahead and, uh, you know, just go ahead and, and run uh, debug as so long as you have your uh, account, you're logged into your M365 account. Uh, and you have custom app loading enabled to get the full team's experience. If you don't, you can also use um, the uh, team's test tool, which is great for debugging with, without that account. But we'll uh, go ahead and I'll go ahead and, and pull up, I already have the debugging started right here. And so we are in a uh, team's uh, channel right here. And then we can go and just at mention our spec critique local. Uh, agent and say evaluate the spec. And so now right here, I'll go and attach the file for the specification and then I'll go send it. And what's really interesting right here with Teams Toolkit, 
when uh, when it's generated the answer right here, when you go back to the terminal, especially with these uh, you know autogen agents, you can see in the terminal what it's doing behind the scenes. The questioner agent is who is the target audience? Who is the audience? And then uh, the answer with the chat manager going through, providing the uh, specification product details so I can help evaluating, sending clarification question for the user right here. Uh, so let's go back. So this is a live demo right here. And uh, so we can go and see what the reply here. Could you please provide the uh, product specification so I can evaluate the target audience for this agent? So uh, we can see it, it's showing the background. Now let's try, let's give it one more try actually, since who uh, spec? Local evaluate the specification. Like I said, this is live. Sometimes. Okay. Let's try it. Let's give it one more try here to see if it pops up. Better. Okay. Mm. Now going back. And sending clarification questions. Okay. Um, so don't want to mess around too much. Uh, sorry about that, but I'll just go here. So if you uh, what what generally would be happening when it is giving the the full answer, um, it goes back and then can go through a full detailed instruction. Here behind the scenes, lay out what what's uh, you know the question, the answer, and they go through each point of the specification document that we had, and so then it lays out for the spec several uh, different specific problems for the audience, and then the answer agent is answering those questions from the questioner, and then it's laying out everything behind behind the scenes here. So normally, if you were to actually do this for a, a, a product, you may not include this full detailed uh, information in the adaptive card, but this is showing you what's what's happening behind the scenes and then go and what it uh, the end result is it provides the uh, spec evaluation or the clear identification of audience and it says, okay, it has the target audience identifies a clear problem statement as well as the identification of the solution and the value proposition in the competition it goes through all the aspects of the uh, specification while giving actual feedback and so it goes through and goes through uh, coordinating with all the different agents being able to give a detailed spec feedback based on your data and of course uh, with live demos Occasionally things don't work out perfectly as planned, um, but the but the sample is uh, you know this is what it will be showing, and I'll have to go through and see what was going on with the channel right there. But still a very exciting thing to dive into and go and and try out yourself. And then uh, just wanted to go on to the very next part really quickly. So after you've gone through and uh, and and built the agent that you want, you can go through the provision, deploy, and publish uh, lifecycle and TTK, where if you're logged into Azure, it sets up the environment for you uh, to then go and publish and set up your resources in Azure. And once you've done that, then uh, you can go through as well and go and go to the developer portal for uh, where, where you, this is your home for managing and configuring and then helping publish all of your apps uh, and agents to M365. So you go here. So remember last week we had the Teams AI Quick Start uh, Dev, which we were working on last week. So uh, and you know this now we have a good look of what this app looks like. We have a dashboard where you can have recent app validation, very helpful. If you're publishing to your org or just going through testing, uh, you can go and evaluate your app right before going publishing or publishing to the store even to get 
uh, see what um, what validation metrics you need to do and any warnings or errors. If he's right off the bat, if we were just going from last week, um, you know, there uh, from from that initial build in TTK, there are still some things that we need to do. So there was the privacy URL and some other things in the manifest that weren't filled out in uh, the developer portal is a very good way to be able to check out do a check on what you missed and so if we go to the manifest which is right here we can see we just have the default privacy url and some of the other default websites that we have to edit to then really have an effective app so when people go uh, and users go and look at our app uh, and, and check out the privacy content it's linked to our actual sites and then um you can go and once you finish up all the validations, you can continue to publish to your org or to the store, or then you would go and coordinate with your either team's admin for your actual org to get their final sign off or go to the partner center and go through that process. But going through the app validation ahead of time really helps with that. And the last part is there is a great uh, dashboard and, and analytics that we don't quite have right here because the app hasn't been published, but there's great information that you can then go and finish up uh, with um, the developer portal where you get access to usage reports, host product splits, and usage capability, and the in-context app definition. So it's a great spot to finish out before publishing, get information, continue to manage your app after you publish it, highly encourage it. And uh, with that, we have the two links to, to finish up with the agent lab, as well as a link to the Teams AI GitHub. So if you wanna learn more, highly recommend starting out with the Copilot Camp uh, agent lab. And then if you're diving deeper, go into the Teams AI GitHub. But yeah, thank, that's uh, what I have today. Thank you for, for watching the series and I'll hand it back to you, Vesa. Thank you.